Hi. Uh, oh. Hi. Um, sorry. Hi. I'm Susan Keefe from Rhubarb and Pooh. Sorry, it's been a while. Hi, I'm Susan Keefe from Rhubarb and Cod, and today I'm overthinking Oysters Rockefeller. The new year is nearly upon us, and nothing says out with the old and in with the new like champagne and oysters. And no oyster is more decadent or bougie than one that's been Rockefellered. Yes, I made it a verb, and yes, I am sorry. Oysters Rockefeller dates back to the late 1800s. It was created in the kitchens of New Orleans' historic restaurant, Antoine's. Opening its doors in 1840, Antoine's is America's oldest family-run business. About 50 years into its run, Jules Alciatori, the son of the founder, Antoine Alciatori, was confronted with a snail shortage. A bit of a situation when you have escargot on the menu. His solution was Oysters Rockefeller, a dish that used the flavor profile of escargot as well as locally sourced golf shush, as well as locally sourced golf course golf course as well as locally sourced golf course golf coast why is this so hard what is wrong with me i don't even like golfing golf course is not a good place to find oysters just just a hot tip what about a golf course near the golf coast as well as locally sourced Gulf Coast oysters. The original recipe is a well-guarded secret. The proportions of ingredients, as well as the ingredients themselves, have never been revealed. But that didn't stop Oysters Rockefeller from becoming wildly popular outside of New Orleans. But if you've ever had Oysters Rockefeller in any restaurant other than Antoine's, you've only had an approximation. And that's what I have for you today, an approximation. So let's get started. Preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Line a baking sheet with rock salt or kosher salt. The salt will help keep the oysters upright so they don't lose their juices. Next, let's start chopping. Start by mincing one clove of garlic and thinly slicing three. Set both aside. Next, coarsely chop two scallions. It was apparently determined through lab research in 1986 that the original recipe did include scallions. So I had to include them because science. Next, coarsely chop one and a half cups of fresh spinach. Now, apparently spinach is not included in the original recipe, but it shows up in almost every other recipe out there. Spinach was not likely part of the original recipe because a number of Antoine chefs have said it wasn't and isn't. It's probable watercress was used to create that bright green color. But because spinach is easier for me to find and probably more familiar to more people, we're using spinach. Once the spinach is coarsely chopped, place it in a colander and give it a rinse. Set it aside to drain. Melt a quarter cup of butter in a large skillet. Pour off half of it into a ramekin and set it aside. To the butter in the skillet, add the sliced garlic and saute until fragrant. Add the spinach and season with a little salt. Cook until it wilts. Pour in one ounce of Pernod and saute until most of the liquid cooks off. Take the skillet off of the heat and set it aside. Pour half a cup of panko breadcrumbs into a bowl. Add the minced garlic, the butter you set aside earlier, and about a quarter cup of shredded grana padano cheese. Stir to combine and set aside. Place the scallions in a food processor and add the spinach. Blitz until smooth. Transfer the puree to a bowl and once again set aside. Now, there are a number of other ingredients you could include in this sauce. I noted watercress earlier, but you could also add capers, arugula, or collards to mention a few. Again, we don't know the original recipe, so you have license to make this your own. Now, shuck your oysters. A lot of people make this out to be a lot more complicated than it is. And I think there is a real art to it, particularly when you're served a plate full of oysters that aren't nicked or marred by the knife. But if you're fine with imperfection, shuckling is strangely approachable. The nice thing about Oysters Rockefeller is you don't have to be perfect. The oysters will be covered in sauce and baked, not served naked with a wedge of lemon. So there are plenty of places to hide less than perfect technique, which is very good news for me because I am not a decorated shucker. The most important thing to remember when shucking an oyster is to protect the non-shucking hand. Oysters are tough nuts to crack, and if you're exerting the necessary force to open them, if your knife slips, it can do some damage. So I like to keep mine partially covered with a tea towel. The tea towel also keeps the oyster from shimming around too much. 
You can use a board if you have one. They are immensely helpful in keeping your oyster steady, but I don't have one, so we're gonna keep things ratchet and rustic. Flip your oyster so the bowl or the more bulbous part of the oyster is facing down. This will give the oyster juices a place to settle down in. Now, find the sweet spot. There's usually a little notch near the tip of the oyster that you can force your knife into. Once you're in, give your knife a twist and the shell should start to pop open. Run the knife along the inside of the top shell to sever the abductor muscle. It should be easy to remove the top shell now. Transfer the shucked oyster to the salt bed and repeat with the remaining oysters. Now for the incredibly easy part. Spoon a little of the green sauce into each oyster. Then sprinkle them generously with the panko mixture. Transfer the baking sheet to the oven and cook for eight minutes. And that's really it. What I love about Oysters Rockefeller is it's so simple, but it makes a big impact. And it's the perfect party food because you can prep the green sauce and the breadcrumbs before your guests arrive, then shuck, bake, and serve once they're there. And shucking oysters is a good bit of dinner theater, especially if you're not particularly good at it. Everybody loves a nail biter. And that's everything I could think to overthink about Oysters Rockefeller. I hope you give this one a go. And if you give it a try, let me know how it went in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to this channel. I post a new recipe every week and a ton of goodies along the way. Thank you for cooking with me. Happy New Year, and I'll see you next time.